And time to take a look at what's making headlines across the globe. And for that, I'm joined in the studio by Erin Agunki. Hello, Erin. Hi, Nat. And you're starting with Russia's reaction to Ukraine's extremely successful counteroffensive. Yeah, that's right. Cracks are starting to show, Annette, amongst Russian politicians. Dozens of municipal deputies from Moscow and St. Petersburg uh, actually called for Vladimir Putin's resignation uh, in an open letter, a petition on Monday. As many as 84 people signed it, including 19 deputies. It's obviously a risky move to make because, uh, as Mos the Moscow Times reminds us, uh, the signatories risked punishment under those new laws that the Kremlin passed after the start of its invasion, which essentially ban any war dissent at all. Uh, for The New York Times, those losses kind of ironically sparked some rare instances of debate on Russian uh, TV channels. There was more of a deviation from uh, the official narrative of the war, some pundits and lawmakers actually even urging the Kremlin uh, to begin peace negotiations, while others kind of expressed views that you would have thought were obvious from the very start. For one example, a political scientist on a debate show uh, uh, said, we can't expect uh, their affection if we tell Ukrainians they don't exist as an, as an ethnicity, that there isn't a Ukrainian language. These are the kind of things that you didn't, that may seem obvious, but you didn't really hear much uh, before what the Times describes as Russia's most humiliating defeat since the initial stages uh, of the war. Now, in the meantime, papers across Europe are concerned about a new wave of far-right political parties coming to power. What's behind that, Erin? Well, a uh, French paper, uh, L'Opinion Annette, calls it the new surge of populism on today's front page. After France, they say, and this is France is a reference to the legislative elections here, uh, which saw the far right make a historical breakthrough. So after that, they say now the hard right in Sweden uh, made gains uh, in Sunday's elections. The paper also notes that far right parties are expected to gain speed in Italy's legislative elections on the 25th of September. And with that in mind, all eyes are now on Giorgia uh, Maloney, who's the leader of the Nationalist Brothers of Italy uh, party, who L'Opinion says is actually uh, quite close to Eric Zemmour, if a comparison is to be made here in France. That's because she champions a kind of reactionary, ultra-conservative, anti-immigration platform and paints herself as the kind of last defender uh, of the Christian and European civilization, obviously uh, white. Uh, now, according to polls quoted in Politico, her party, the Brothers, uh, could get as much as 25 percent of the vote, one in four Italians. Now, that would put her on course to lead a right-wing coalition as Italy's next prime minister. So the paper zooms in on what it describes as Italy's capital of the far right, and that is the Abruzzo region. It's because it's the first region to have come under the party's control in the year 2019. And what people profiled in this Politico piece say is that uh, they favor her party because of its response to the coronavirus pandemic, uh, also because of the reconstruction efforts that had apparently kind of stepped up after an earthquake in, in 2009. Many also cite what they see as her authenticity. She's got a working class background. I think some say that she doesn't even have a, a university degree. Critics, of course, Annette, as is often the case, are painting a much different picture. They say the brother's leadership uh, hasn't really been all that successful, that health care, for example, is increasingly privatized, and, of course, that they've trampled on the reproductive rights of women, as well as housing rights for minorities and, and people of colour. Moving on, and there's growing controversy over the UK's treatment of anti-monarchy protests. Again, what are the papers saying in that case? Well, it's an interesting debate, uh, Annette, because there have been several incidents uh, since the Queen's death causing concerns about civil liberties there. Uh, the Independent tells us that several different people were uh, arrested in Scotland and in Britain, including one person who was actually charged with a criminal offence, uh, while people also removed a, not my ki a woman holding a Not My King uh, poster near Park. Parliament. Now, rights defenders qu quoted in this piece say that all of this is not only an affront to democracy and maybe even illegal, but also that it simply in, is an historic tradition of, uh, Brit of Brit the British past, of, of protest in, in, in the United Kingdom. And indeed, for a Guardian editorialist, the arrests mark a clear change in how Republicans, anti-monarchists, are being perceived and treated in Britain. The piece argues that you can no longer voice anything but adoration for the monarchy. Uh, as an example, in 1994, the now Prime Minister Liz Truss actually said that it was disgraceful that people, aka the King and or the Queen, uh, are heads of state simply because of the families that they're born into. Now, this uh, would essentially be unimaginable uh, today, as this editorialist argues. And, and certainly with her as Prime Minister, that's for sure. Now, finally, progress has been made on treating lung cancer in recent years. So what does it mean for patients? Yeah, lots of exciting news about cancer treatment this week, Annette. So according to French paper Le Figaro, 
it means that their life expectancies are improving significantly thanks to some new treatment options. Uh, so much so that a French doctor quoted in the piece says that you no, act, you no longer have to tell patients with metastasized lung cancer that they can't be cured. He says other terms like chronic illness or controlling the effects of the illness are more appropriate given the new types of treatment that we have. Um, now, this progress is thanks to two major innovations over the past two decades or so. That's targeted therapy on the one hand, which targets specific genes and proteins that allow cancer cells to develop and survive. And then the second one is immunotherapy, which was rolled out here in France in the year 2015. And that type of therapy stimulates the immune system so that it attacks cancer cells. I will say, Annette, that the experts quoted in this piece say that this information should really encourage people to be a little bit more rigorous with their screenings, because often people are afraid to go do screenings, especially smokers, people who live in highly polluted areas, because they're afraid of the results. But this new, um, this progress shows that life expectancies are improving, and it's no longer a death sentence necessarily to be diagnosed. That's great to hear. Thank you so much, Erin Agunki. And if you want to take a look at the stories we've been talking about, you can, of course, head to our website, that being france24.com.